All right. You're just going to record it. Cape Canaveral. 1964. <laughs> Well, it's a long story, so where do you want to begin? Make it... I mean, we this can is, tell you about the no, alligators on the way to that's the a, that's, an, that's a separate story. Let's just yeah. do the... Okay, so. You and your buddy <clears throat> decide. Yeah, we, we got down here, and it was supposed to be launched at a certain time, and the next thing you know, they're announcing on the radio that it's going to be delayed for whatever reason, but they didn't say how long, okay? And it was going to be a night launch. I think it was like 10 o'clock or something. So everybody was standing there, and they have an area fenced off where you have to stop. You can't go beyond that because of the security and everything. And nobody knows how big it is. Nobody really knows anything. And you're not allowed to take, take, take pictures or anything in there, so nobody really knew anything except from this. You could look down the coast, and you were going to be able to see you know, the launch, and it would be a big flame and everything else. So it was a pretty beautiful view, okay. apparently. And there were several hundred people right there. So we're standing around waiting and waiting. And then when they announced that there was going to be a, a delay, we decided to walk on down. Well, hell, they got security there, you know, along the coast. But we were walked down to the beach where the water, uh, the ocean is coming in, and you could hear the waves breaking and everything. Well, the guy, there were two guys at this particular guard post, and one smoked. I don't know whether both did, but the one smoked. So I told my buddy, I said, guess what? I said, the next time he lights a cigarette, we're gone. You know, we will just run. He can't hear us against the waves coming in, and there's a breeze. <clears throat> so the guy lit up a cigarette, and we sprinted down there about 100 yards, and we're in past security, because that's all they had. There was a fence and stuff, but for the last uh, 50, 200 feet, uh, there was no fence. You were on the sand, you know, at the, at the, you at the line. No, 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 we walked. <laughs> So we started walking, walking, and wa we walked all night. And here we had walked 11 miles. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and, we're, and we were going in the direction of the launch, so we knew we couldn't miss the launch, but we kept walking and walking, you know, and the next thing is sunrise, and down there it was hot and, and, and ungodly sticky, and so the next thing you know, we decided to take a swim. So I take off my clothes, put, put my watch and my wallet in my pants, Took my shoes on. The only thing I put back on were my overalls. I had my underwear in my shoe, too, and my shirt. <laughs> so all I really have on is a pair of pants, and we're swimming. And, and then we come out, and we decide to walk on down a ways, you know, and we <coughs> leave the clothes there, because we had to be getting close. We've been walking all night. We come up over a bunker. Now, you have to try to imagine this. Along the coast, they had taken, I mean, I don't know how long it took them with big bulldozers to push the dirt and stuff and sand up to make a bunker which was maybe 30 feet high the whole distance and the reason for that was if they had a submarine offshore the periscope would not be able to see past the bunker to see any of the complex that's the way they had it secured that way that's crazy. <laughs> so anyway we had stuck our pants there and we walked up over and, and all of a sudden my God, all we could see is these complexes as far as the eye could see. These were all launch pads. And I thought, geez, I didn't know they had that many launch pads. And, you know, and they were like a quarter of a mile apart. Boom, 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 one after the other. So anyway, all of a sudden, how do we get the complex 19? Because we don't know which one it is. And we wanted to be at the one yeah. where the launch was going to be. And we could walk down to the shore because nobody was looking for security because we were beyond security. So yeah, <laughs> we, we were deep past what he called behind the line of uh, enemy watch. what do you call that? Enemy watch. Yeah, we were behind the enemy lines. <laughs> so anyway, we walked up and there was this parking lot with a bunch of cars and jeeps and everything else in it. And so we walked down there and I hot wired a jeep and we started <laughs> driving around. And I did not smoke at the time. But we saw a guy coming through this intersection, and they have a checkpoint. There was somebody guarding every intersection, watching. And he would come out, and the guys would drive by, and they would show him something, Look and then right. drive right through. Well, I said, give me, give me your cigarettes. I grabbed this pack. I drove through it about 60 mile an hour, flashed the thing up. The guy waved. We waved. <laughs> <laughs> We, we did that for the next four hours. We drove around that complex, and finally we stopped and asked a guy which one was Complex 19, you know. And this guy is so stupid, he was a worker, you know. 
So he said, oh, no, that's got to be the one over there. And you could see they, they had smoke and stuff from, they were starting to load the sucker up with the oxygen or whatever. So we drove back. We figured we'd better take the Jeep on down back of them, maybe a mile, and then we'll walk up the rest of the way. <laughs> so we come back down, and don't you know, damn, I'm, I, I didn't make it up over the sand dune. I got stuck, and I buried that sucker right to the ashes. So we get out. Leave the key in, or we didn't have the key, we just left it the way it was. And then we go up and down over the other side, and we still don't know what time it's going to go off or anything. You know? So we go down to where we're right behind the launch pad of Complex 19, where Conrad and Cooper are going to fly away. In. <laughs> and uh, so we go up, and we are sitting on top of that bunker, and we're about I'd say it's 150 yards from the bunker to the launch pad, in, inland. We're sitting there for like an hour or so. It's like a football field now. I really can't get deeper. Well, that is bad. So I get bored. You know, I said, well, I'm going down. I'm going down and look around. Well, when you get right down to where the missile is, it sits inside of a square uh, cyclone fence, what do they call them, with the wire, bomb wire, anyway. Yeah. And... Uh, it's actually enclosed inside a fence of its own. So I walk down, and I'm leaning on this fence, and I'm watching. And I got to see Conrad and Cooper go up the elevator to get out of that gizmo to walk over and get into the, the missile. And all of a sudden, oh, my God, whistles are going off. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, I'm like, what the hell? I look back and I, I don't see Ted, you know? He was sitting up there. I could see him up on the bank. And I'm thinking, man, they must have seen him or something. Well, guess what? It was me that they saw. And the security police didn't see me. It was Walter Conkright on national TV. They're scanning the pad, right? And, the, and the, I guess it goes this way. And then, whoa, look at that. What's that? You know, this guy's... He don't have any clothes on, you know what I mean? <laughs> so th this is all going within within like two, three minutes. These trucks are coming in. They're the old canopy trucks with the canvas over, the old original army type trucks. And uh, guys are jumping out and oh man, I'm looking like what the hell? And I'm still thinking at the time they've seen Ted. Then I saw trucks going to that side. I also saw the trucks coming. Was Ted side. in a bush or something? Huh? I thought I remember something in a bush. No, I there is a bush. I'm going to get to that part. Okay. So anyway, Pimento <laughs> shrubs, that's what they're called. So anyway, when I realized they're, they're trying to surround the place, I'm thinking, I'm still thinking it was Ted. But as they started running towards me, I ducked down. And on TV, it shows me diving in <laughs> under these bushes. <laughs> so I, I'm crawling around on my stomach, getting deeper into these shrubs. And they're like, they don't really stab you or anything, but they're real stiff and jagged, you know. So I'm climbing in there, and I'm in there maybe 30, 50 feet. And they're blowing a whistle, and they're talking about, come on out, and this and that. And I'm like, what the hell? I'm still thinking, Ted got seen me. They didn't see me. Yet. But I remember, I remember leaning up like this, and I'm looking, and I turn around, there he is! <laughs> the guy's looking at me, you know? <laughs> so the guy has a bullhorn. Telling me to come out. And I'm man, I don't even know where, you know what I mean? I, so anyway, I ended up standing up and I walked out and he gets a hold of me, he's really pissed off. And two of them escorted me over to this SUV and they literally threw me in the back and they started heading up up over the bunker. And this guy really knew how to drive because he was flying, you know, like, like when I told you I had sunk the Jeep, I tried to just drive up and you can't because of the sand. You have to sort of go pretty fast. So we get up to the top, and he's all the time he's asking me, is there anybody with you? we got to get out of here. Is there anybody? I said, no, no, I'm by myself, you know, because I wasn't going to snitch on my buddy. So anyway, <coughs> as we start down the other side, this guy has binoculars. He's hanging out an open door looking, you know. He's hanging on the door, and he's looking at the guy. <laughs> there he is. And I'm like, I know he's there, and I can't see him. Here, he tends about 100, 150 yards out from shore, swimming straight down. <laughs> he was steady swimming with a, wow. what do you call that, the Australian crawl. crawl. <laughs> anyway, he, he, bull, he has the bullhorn. He's yelling for Ted to come back. And then they were on the phone. 
desperately talking about are you in the red zone? You know, how far away are you? Because you have to be a minimum of three miles away from the uh, blast area on the launch pad in case something goes wrong. And we all know from Columbia when something explodes, there's a lot of fuel down here. <laughs> so anyway, he's yelling at Ted. He drives right down. Ted comes back. They throw him in the back of the van. We were heading up 70 mile an hour right you near know, where the water and the sand's the hardest. <laughs> this guy's going like 70 mile an hour to get out of the blast zone. We can't do it. They stopped the launch because of that. <laughs> they called off the launch. So the NASA police take us down and lock us up in a <laughs> What's that? NASA. NASA. NASA Bahamas. So anyway, we're, we're in this core, and they take us out one at a time, and they're questioning us. Cooler, and we're ready. in a cold cooler. Yeah, a natural cold cooler. That's the only place they don't have Were you the, naked? The jail in, no, because I had my overalls on. But they wanted to know this, and how many languages they spoke, and what country. They wouldn't believe me, you know? Yeah. And I have no ID on me, you know? And that doesn't sound very good. I kept telling them, it's, we buried it down there because of this, that, and the other thing. And... We didn't, and I never told him about the Jeep, you know, I didn't be arrested for stealing the damn Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I wrote out three different uh, descriptions of what I had done, or how I did it, and what have you, and how close I was. And they kept changing it, and typing it, and wanting me to sign it, and I would not do it. Now Ted ended up signing his, but I didn't sign mine. And they were really getting pretty nasty about it. And the time was going on. They didn't want to make it look like, look like it was a security breach. Oh, no. They were talking about we were only within a quarter of a mile and that we did this to get past security. Okay. And, and, you know, and it was so lax, it's crazy. And, yeah. you know, and I, and I wrote on there, I mean, I'm come on, I'm a, I'm a taxpayer and I spend <laughs> thousands of dollars for this and then and this is the kind of security, you know, I was within, <laughs> I was within 100 yards of this I they weren't sure the reason feet. for big changes after that. Yes. Oh, well, that happened later. But So anyway, it, they, they were really getting nasty because three times I refused to sign their statement. And now the feds came. The FBI did finally come. And they took us under their custody then. And that's when the shit hit the fan because the Nassau security was very lax. It wasn't very efficient. And the FBI doesn't know about it. Nobody really knows about it or didn't know anything about it. So anyway, when, when the feds got us, we got arrested for illegal trespass. And I didn't find this out until later, but 26 people were all caught beyond the that security day. line. Huh? That day. Oh. Well, it was lunch day. That, what other day would you sneak in there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know. Well, anyway, they didn't do anything with them, but we were from out of state, so they were going to make an example of us. And because it was on national TV, they sort of they couldn't cover their butt by not saying anything to anybody, you know. So I didn't. I have to go back and tell you the part about being in the uh, core. So when they're trying to get this information out of me about, I told them I was a college student at Penn State University, and we were down there to, to take him down to college, and that's why we were there and everything. And uh, so I did tell him, well, you can call my mother. She'll verify everything. So my mother actually saw this on TV. She was watching the launch, right? So they call her up and say, do you have a kid named Mary Young? And she said, yes. And she said something about, well, you know that he's in Florida. No, no. She said, that's not my son. He's at Penn State University. So she hangs up. So they call her. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's my mother. you got to call her back. So they call her back, and now she's had time to think, right? So when she answers the phone, and she says, look, Mrs. Young, we're trying to find out some information. We have a guy here that says, or a kid here that says that he's your son, Gary Young. And she says, is he in trouble? And they said, yes. And he said, that's my son. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that at least verified that. So <laughs> when they did take us down because the first thing they wanted to do is to go get our clothes to substantiate our to, identification, to you know. So don't you know he takes the same road up behind his Jeep that I had sunk into the sand and he pulls out and stops and they had like four guards with us. And so they get out and they're looking all around and I'm thinking, 
know, we don't want to get in trouble for this. Don't say a word, you know. Because they had us both together at the time. So the one the one guard I heard him say to the other one, he said, well, 